Warning, Wild Boys features stunts performed by and under the supervision of professionals. MTV and the producers must insist that no one attempt to recreate or reenact any of these stunts or activities. No animals were harmed in the production of this show. Hi, I'm Steve-O and welcome to the making of Wild Boys. Everybody wants to know how our magic happens, but we're not telling. How would I describe Wild Boys? How would I describe the Wild Boys? It's absolutely dangerous. I mean, for the sake of being dangerous. Nature programming has always involved danger. And for once and for crying out loud, it now it has a sense of humor. This is the Nile Crocodile. And it's obvious why it's called the Nile Crocodile, because it will Nile at you. <laughs> How would I describe the Wild Boys? I am one of the Wild Boys. Ask someone else to describe us. Wild Boys is about two wildery scientists that are the tops of their fields. The reason I'm on these extra sketchy stilts is because I'm studying the giraffe and hoping to make out with him. All right, well, I'm going to study the undercarriage while you make out with him. These photographs, I'll be able to take it back to my lab and study it properly. The Wild Boys are a team of adventurers Cultural anthropologists, in my idea, and sex symbols above all. Romance is in the air on a cold, dark, crisp winter's morning in Tasmania. But now it's time to learn about some of the birds that are naive to Australia. Here we have perhaps the most naive of them all, the kookaburra. I think I'll go in for a closer look. <coughs> mm, good. Part of the, the ingredients that Steve-O and Chris Bonias have that makes them so special is they're a special breed of scientists. They're lacking a little bit of sense. These insects are called African emperor scorpions. And now they're gonna sting my butt. <laughs> Ow! How does my approach to animals differ for Steve-O? I guess I seem to get bit in the face more often and he seems to get bit in the butt. So I guess you could say I'm more oral and he's more anal. <laughs> <laughs> when he got when he got nailed on the nose by the snapping turtle, I just felt so behind him. Steve-O is clearly more afraid of everything out there than Chris, as just a basic thing. Oh! 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 God, he's ripping me open, dude. <laughs> Holy oh! He doesn't seem to like to be around big cats. I'm not saying he won't be around big cats, because he will, but he doesn't really like it. I don't know what Chris is doing, man. I was actually joking about sneaking up on it, but Chris is really going to do it. Steve-O has no instincts for working with animals, which is, which is great, because uh, animals actually pick up on fear, and, they, and uh, there's like an electricity. When you're scared of something, that triggers a lot of behavior in animals, and they'll just come right after you. One night it occurred to us, like, Wow, a lot of animals bite, and you know, we've been bitten. To it. So we got a pen and paper, what Chris did, and uh, he just wrote down, like, animals that have bit me or something. And, um, and he's got such great ones on the list. Like, for animals that broke the skin while attacking him, he's got, um, uh, oh my god, he's got a big cat, he's got a puma, he's got alligator, he's, he's got some, some winners, he's, he's got black bear. What I did discover from being bit by the bear I was completely unprepared. I was I was camping. I was sleep. I was laying in my sleeping bag, and and um, he must have just smelt me through the sleeping bag, and he and he clamped down on me, and it was so strong, I couldn't believe it. And I never, from that day on, I decided I never want to get bit by a bear again. If the bear starts moving around and like wandering, don't run. Don't just sit there. He's not gonna come up and just bite anybody. He'll be curious. He'll check things out. Don't like make any sudden movements. We had an idea. Let's do everything wrong in camping and try to attract black bears. One thing you got to remember with bears is that you never want to leave food in or around the tent. At least not outside of the cooler. 
they started eating food and throwing it in the tent. And black bears like sweet things, like candy bars and cookies. But I don't. And then they decided to lay down in the tent. And uh, sure enough, the bear comes up and it wants to go in the tent. He starts sniffing around. And uh, there's two guys in the sleeping bag. He's standing on them. And he's looking at the food. And then he starts just like sniffing the guys and takes a little investigative bite. He was just checking what was in. You know, yeah, was scratch. Like if there was something under the sleeping bag. <laughs> and it was me. There are so many animals that would be extremely dangerous if approached fully clothed, <laughs> you know? Just like Robert Plant said when he was in Led Zeppelin. Like they'd asked him why why he always had his shirt off when he's playing live. He said with a body like this, it would be a crime for me to cover it up. So I'm pretty much going off that. Whenever you see us chasing large herds of animals, that's when we're playing our game of naked natives. That's just something we love to do. We're not completely naked. We're wearing belts. And that's, that's a game me and my brother used to play when we were little kids called naked natives. Like we'd run around the house with belts on and like, like if, if a friend's mom would come to pick up the the um, the friend or whatever, my brother would be hiding on the like behind the door, like on a stool or something. And he'd jump on her back naked, you know. Nothing feels better to feel your hair in the wind, chasing a group of like cows or you know kangaroos, whatever it is, you know, completely naked except for a belt. I don't know why we wear the belt, but it looks cool as hell. A lot of animals have found me really attractive. And, I mean, obviously, I've found some animals to be really attractive. <laughs> I got way tongue there. Yeah. See, I can scientifically conclude <laughs> that the giraffe is a great kisser. <laughs> we've had giraffe makeouts. We've had kinkajou licking nipples. We've had all sorts of borderline encounters, if you will. But I think both parties were pleased in the end. It's time to meet an animal who's named after his raw sensuality, the kinkiest beast in the entire jungle, and his name is the Kinkajou. How dangerous is the stuff that we do on Wild Boys? All these seals are doing is waiting to die at the jaws of a great white shark. So we're going to go swim with them? <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> this is the world's dumbest place to swim. You know, if, if we're out, like, doing something with sharks, you know, we're not going to look, look into the shark to see how dangerous it is. It's fun to look at the jaws of it afterwards. Minutes after exiting the water, the boys witness a chilling attack on a seal in the very same area they were just swimming. <laughs> we just got out of the water swimming pole. <laughs> If there, if there is anyone in the world who is Tarzan, it's Manny Puig, and everybody knows that. He is Tarzan. What can I tell you about Manny? It would be an insult to call Manny Tarzan. He is so badass. Oh, Manny is, you know, all-knowing, just animal god, can actually speak to the animals. He won't tell you that, but the reason he could get in as close as he does and have nothing happen to him is because he talks to him beforehand and he c they kind of come to an agreement. The snake focuses everything that's in front of it. It picks up your heat from your body and everything. So you have to be very careful when you approach this animal. She's already picked me up, see? What I do in Wild Boys is basically I'm an, uh, a predator expert. I specialize on animals that eat other animals and sometimes humans. What do we do if like the alligator bites us? If an alligator goes for you, you go like this and hide under his face. So we're gonna go into the swamp to find alligators and then hide from alligators <laughs> under alligators. If Manny says that an idea is not okay to pursue, it's not okay to pursue. Like when Manny says no, it means hell no. <laughs> When Manny says yes, 
that doesn't mean much, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, you could be in trouble. The idea for, for what happened with the boa was something I wanted to do on Jackass called the Blindfolded Snake Handler. And I wanted to blindfold myself and, and go in and, um, and try to pick up a rattlesnake. And they told me, then I talked to Manny about it, and Manny's like, no, you do not. Like, I thought a rattlesnake bite was like, you know, they, you get bit, it swells up, you get a little anti-venom and you're cool. He's like, no, you do not let yourself get bit by a rattlesnake. I wanted to tell the audience, when you're working with snakes, you always want to keep your eyes on them at all times. Because, you know, they're quick and they can bite you. Part of the research of wildlife is animals, the reproductive cycles of wild animals, you know, everything in this world reproduces and they have sexual behaviors. And they, Steve-O and Pontius do a lot of study on the sexual behavior and reproduction of wild animals. To better know how to make sure these animals don't become extinct is to study their wieners, as you call them. Where's his penis? <laughs> you must have a big one. Yeah. The moose is the largest of the deer family. So, of course, you're right if you guessed it has the largest tallywhacker in the whole deer family. Which animal has the biggest wiener? The walrus has the biggest wiener that's an actual bone. I mean, it's a bone. This is the walrus penis. <laughs> it's huge. Walruses actually have bones in their penises, huh? Uh huh. That's, that one is actually rock hard. They're so <laughs> lucky. Some animals have big wieners, some animals have small wieners. But there was this baboon and he was masturbating right in front of us. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Baboons definitely masturbate the most. And, you know, the best. They have a real casual approach to it, you know? Like, it's like, they're not even doing anything, you know? Like, whatever. Maybe if we pull out our wieners, they'll be more comfortable. <laughs> Imitation is the highest form of flattery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think everyone thinks it's funny when animals masturbate. I mean, I don't know anyone that doesn't think that's funny. Um, as far as poo and, and wieners, that's just science, you know? And the show's about science. Chris, what's that called? It's called a kudu. What is that, Siva? It's kudu doo doo. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so fresh and stick. Wet. <laughs> totally wet, dude. <laughs> An animal's diet is one of the most important things you can study because if an animal doesn't eat, it's probably going to die. So, you got to study the poop. So, these are actual turds, huh? Fresh turds. <laughs> That's right, they are turds. What we're going to do is a very special sport, a bush sport called bok drol spuk. Buck, turd, spitting. <laughs> Very few scientists that are willing to go to the extreme to taste the poo of certain animals to find out what their diet is about. All in the, in the name of uh, science and goodwill. Right off the bat, dude, I'm gonna go for the automatic machine gun. <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> My vomits are never intentional. I'm not gonna puke. I'm not gonna... <laughs> a lot of times I'm in situations that are, are so disgusting that I naturally vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that I have a weak stomach. I would say that I have a powerful imagination. <laughs> you know, like the idea that something could be really gross, you know, grows in my mind and it brings me to vomit a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it smells bad, huh? <laughs> the scariest situation. Hmm. Probably, uh, falling asleep around the other guys. If they're not sleeping, it's probably when you're at most risk of getting hurt. Black Mamba. What we've learned is Black Mambas are very dangerous snakes. Oh. I don't think they're dangerous if you're alert and aware that they're around, but if you kind of fall asleep near 
where black mambas might be residing, they tend to be very aggressive, and, uh, and they do go after sleeping people. It's a vicious strike, and you don't even know what hits you, and it's, it's just it's, it's a horrible experience. I don't wish it upon my worst enemies. Oh my God. I didn't do anything. Are you <laughs> naked? Of course I'm naked, dude. What do you want? <laughs> the boat captain is, you know, putting the food in the water, trying to lure the sharks towards the boat. And they're like, all right, look, you guys, you know, just stay calm. Well, let's get the sharks to the where they're comfortable to be around the boat. And Mark's underwater filming in a cage. It was kind of obvious, like, you know, film the shark, <laughs> you know? Like, we didn't think that we had to tell Mark Rackley, like, stay in the shark cage. So finally, the shark starts swimming around, and uh, Mark's filming it, and then the shark turns. All of a sudden, Mark just swims out of cage, starts swimming after it, and I'm like, Mark, what are you doing? <laughs> he chased the great white shark under the boat. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what the hell? Get Mark out of the water, get Mark out of the Everyone on the boat, shark experts, medics, directors, producers, me, everyone freaked out. Brackley's behind the camera and he can't see. He's not seeing what's behind him. And he'll sit there and hold the shot and he'll take a hit from whatever. The shark just slammed right into my face, right into the camera. Why didn't you go back in the cage while that was going on? <laughs> Well, I couldn't see anything, number one. And I was kind of like startled. It kind of startled me like that. And then, you know, then I got it together. And, you know, and, and I knew he, he had swung away from me at that point. Mark Brackley got back in the cage and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But dude, I ain't never seen one of them. <laughs> you know? Holy crap! Hey, Mark, did that look cool? What the? Mark Rackley doesn't know what the word zoom means. Like, Mark, to, to Mark Rackley, the word zoom means get closer. <laughs> you know? We're learning that these great white sharks are not the friendliest of creatures. Like, we've seen, before he did that, we'd already witnessed, like, three attacks on seals all around this little island. Like, the most violent attacks I've ever witnessed. And to see Mark just jump out and swim after the shark with his camera, and, like, oh. When, I mean, when you're, when you're in danger for a living, like, of course, the idea of it is hard, you know? And like, when you're getting attacked, of course, that sucks too. It all sucks, but, you know, it's called a hit TV show. <laughs> I don't think anybody out there should become a wild boy or should even attempt any of the ingredients to be a wild boy. This is something uh, special. Leave it to the experts and stay away from it. If you do, you're on your own. I am not responsible, neither are the wild boys. For anybody who gets eaten, killed, or maimed out there, I'm giving a clear warning. This is for us. We face our consequences. So stay away from the wild boys' approach to nature. Nobody's wilder than the wild boys. <laughs> but the truth is, we love animals, and we would never hurt one. And please, don't try the things you see on this show at home. <laughs> oh, well, I got news for old Dundee and old Tarzy. There's been a lot of people talking a lot of garbage around the nature scene, talking smack about the wild boys, saying we can't survive in the outback, in the bush, saying we can't swing from vines. Well, I got news for Dundee and Tarzy. They got nothing on the wild boys. Nothing. Well, Dundee, Jacques Cousteau, we're calling you out. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs>